Hello, welcome back to Blake's Den. So this is my 1997 Rover Mini Cooper MPI. So I've done lots of videos of this Mini on my channel. Um, but it's developed a problem, well actually first happened sort of about a year ago, where it just completely fails to start. You'll turn the key and it'll just be nothing. Just not, it won't crank or anything, it'll just be dead. Um, the fuel pump relays work, the, the MEMS relay works, you can hear that working. So I believe it's a wiring fault between the uh, immobiliser or ECU and the starter. Because it's just not sending the signal to the starter to crank it. So let's give it a test and see what happens. So red light means immobiliser is on. Two clicks of the fob turns it off. Key in the ignition. Ignition on. And it starts absolutely fine. So, as you saw, that didn't go to plan. It did actually start, which shows it being an intermittent problem. So, to replicate what happens, I've just left the immobiliser on, the lights on. So, when you turn the ignition on, you go to crank it, you get nothing. And that's pretty much what was happening. So, Let's try and work out what the problem is. What I have here is the Rover wiring diagrams. Um, I downloaded these from the Mini Forum. If you're not a member of the Mini Forum, I thoroughly recommend that you join. Uh, just in the same way, I thoroughly recommend that you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Um, so yeah, it's a really useful source of information. So I've been studying these and trying to work out what happens. And by looking at the ignition system, so the ignition barrel, position four crank, so bear in mind my car's not cranking, there's a white and red wire, goes all the way down through a fuse, comes out through a connector, goes into a white and pink wire, which goes into the bottom half of the starter relay, and that provides the 12 volt feed. So first thing I want to do, I want to check I've got continuity on that wire so that there's no breaks in it and there's a very low resistance between the ignition barrel and the starter relay. So what I've done here is I've just taken the cowl off the steering column and disconnected the wiring plug there, plugged my multimeter into the, um, the sort of pin which corresponds to that red and white wire. And then if you come with me around to here, this is the MEMS relay unit, so it's got a series of relays in. Pop the plug off and I've pulled out the little um, sort of weather seal thing which goes on it. And now when I plug the other end of my multimeter into the bottom corner, see we've got continuity and we've got very low resistance, so 0.3 of an ohm. So to me that means that that wire between the ignition and the starter relay, which provides a 12 volt of the relay, is good. So for the next test, I've connected my multimeter to earth and I've connected it to that same pin again, the pink and white wire. I've set it to voltage and now when I turn the ignition on, even with the immobiliser and sort of armed, so if I go to crank, we should get voltage. Yeah. So we've got voltage. So that is good. So I'm happy with that side of a relay is working. So I now know that the, the left-hand side of a starter relay is fine. The right-hand side is red and white wire comes out, goes into the alarm ECU, which is the Lucas 5AS system behind the dashboard and then comes out on a grey or slate and white, that's what WS means, or white and slate, into the ECU. Ignore my pencil marks, that was from my very first video where I couldn't get my car running. So what happens there is um, when the ECU, alarm ECU says, yeah, you're okay to start, the car's been, um, the mobilizer's turned off, it sends a signal to here 
and then the ECU provides an earth and that completes that circuit, completes the starter relay and fires up the starter motor. So yeah, I need to check from the back of that wire and plug I just had out to this grey and white wire going into the ECU. Just unscrew the ECU there, just a single little screw holds into the bracket. I've had this out quite a lot of times, so if you see my first video, I'll put the link above, which is when I just couldn't get it to start at all. It was in and out a lot then. I also took it out when I did the uh, clutch slave sonder, which is still looking shiny down there. So, uh, yeah, I suspect it's one of these wires is just a bit past it. Uh, right, let's do that continuity test. I've removed the ECU and removed the little weather plugs out the sockets. The slate and white wire, and grey and white, goes into the um, the middle row and it's about the fifth one along. I've double checked that against the um, wire and book here, so it tells you what all the uh, where all of the uh, connectors are and everything. So happy I've got that. And I've got the other end connected up to the the red and white wire from the plug. So that should be continuity through the ECU for the immobiliser Lucas 5AS to the ECU. So what we've got here then, so that's with the immobiliser armed. If I disarm the immobiliser, we should get some continuity. So we have got continuity, now it's not beeping because I've got it in resistance mode but it's actually quite a high resistance in that circuit and I, I'd, I'd expect it not to be high resistance so that might be the problem there. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pop the dashboard apart to get to the 5ES unit to check the continuity between the MEMS relay in the 5ES and 5ES to the ECU. I've managed a bit of a shortcut here. The 5AS alarm immobilizer unit is about there. By removing the radio, I've been able to get my hand in and pull out the uh, connector. So with my multimeter plugged into the starter relay, and we go to the fourth pin at the top here, which is the red and white wire, we should get continuity. So let's see what happens. Okay. So there we are. Quite a low impedance. Jumping around a bit, but so I don't think it's that end of a circuit which is the problem. Let's try the wire from here back to the ECU. So now I'm testing the slate and white wire or the grey and white wire. So I've got the Multimeter on the ECU side and on the wiring plug side here. Let's have a look. It's quite difficult to do with one hand. But basically that's a low impedance circuit now. So I've got two low impedance circuits. I've got one to the Lucas 5AS and one coming out of the Lucas 5AS. And when I measured it previously, it was a very high resistance. So is it the case that by jiggling the wires, moving the wires, I've, I've disturbed the wire and it's now making good contact? Or is it actually the 5AS unit, which is offering the really high impedance? You'd have a think about that. Decided to break out the big guns here and using the P-Scan program, the excellent P-Scan program. So I've got a video about this as well. So this is currently reading live data from the ECU. So it's, it's pulling in all the parameters. As you can see, it's got temperatures and speeds and pressures. But if you look at this very first one on the top, so that is security input. High means it's connected. Low means it's disconnected. So it keeps on jumping around. I'm not quite sure why that is. 
So I'm going to have a bit of a play around and see if I can get that to be more constant. The plot thickens. Put it all back together. Thought I'd go out for a drive. That's with your mobiliser off. That's exactly what it was doing. No crank. Looking at the live data, that's sort of still flickering around a bit, which is a bit odd. Uh, let me see what the immobiliser says. It says the correct code has been received. And actually, I can hear the starter relay clicking when I turn the key. You might not be able to hear it on this video. So I wonder if it's actually the earth to the ECU then is the problem, because I have actually upgraded that wire and upgraded the earth terminal. Hmm. Seems to be working now. All I've done is move the ECU to there. It's got to be a dodgy wire gun in the back here. With the ECU back in its normal position, a crank, nothing. So let's hold the crank and move the ECU and see what happens. So it was working there, let's try it again. Yeah, put the back in there. Definitely a bad wire. So I went back to the wiring diagrams, trying to work out what I could eliminate further. And the last thing I thought was, there's a wire that comes from the MEMS starter relay down to the starter solenoid down here. And when I took a look, which is very hard to see because it's stuck in the gap through the grill. I can't even get it to show you. Basically, the wire was loose. And it's broken off on the back of the starter solenoid. And I think it's just been purely coincidental when I've been moving the ECU, it's been moving the loom which that wire is on and it's ended up making contact. So, grill off and we'll get that repaired. Well, there's your problem. That should be in there. And that sort of fires to start the solenoid, so we'll see if I can get that repaired. So with the wire in plug apart, you can see how the wire's just snapped off. It's just a crimped connector, so um, yeah, we'll see about uh, just uncrimping that, clean it up, and see if we can re-terminate the wire. As I was pulling the old plug apart, it sort of completely disintegrated. Luckily, I had a spare 9.5mm spade connector. Now, it's not a 90 degree type, it's a straight on type, so there's a bit of a bend radius there I'm not too so happy about, but that's made on there now. Let's see if it works. So, ignition on. This time. Right, that's great. Um, I've got a bit of heat shrink I'm going to put on there just to protect that terminal. And I think I might try and pull the loom over a bit. I'll try and get a cable tie on just to sort of ease that radius. So there we are, all back together and working now. So there's a couple of points I think I need to discuss. So the first one was about that um, security line flickering on when I was using P-Scan. I asked on the T-Bar forum, which is the official forum for technical support for P-Scan. And um, yeah, someone else said their mini MPI and it did the same thing. So that was a bit of a red herring. Second thing was this actual fault. So people say that MPIs are too complicated. But this fault was actually between, in an indirect way, the key and the starter motor. So you could have that problem in any Mini. In fact, this Mini here, Project Designer, has the exact same problem. Um, you turn the key and it doesn't crank. And you've got to manually short out the starter motor to make it fire up. So thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, I really like the interaction of people leaving comments and the likes all help with the YouTube logarithm as do the subscribe, so, so please do that. So yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.